if you look at your notes, you're going to notice that the first thing you do is find your common denominator. These are not the same, so we are going to have to get a common denominator. That's a second step, so I'm going to have this area is going to move over here, my work area. So I'm going to have to leave myself enough room. If I put my division over here, where are my whole numbers going to be? So spacing-wise, you have to judge that you're going to have to move over a little bit. So your whole numbers can be put in here. In fact, if you want to put your whole numbers in there, you could do that right away. Uh, the, the, the denominator that's common now is 10. So 10, this whole fraction is already in tenths, so it just gets copied right over. This is so easy right there. That's a gift. Then you're going to have to think. 5 times what gives you 10? 5 times 2. So you're going to use the times 2 for the numerator. And there's only one spot where that answer could go. It's a numerator, and this is open. So 2 times 3 is 6, and now that I've got the calculation, I can put it right where it belongs, and then move my whole number over. Okay, it's a subtraction, so we have to see if the first fraction has a numerator large enough to subtract 6. It doesn't. So we're going to have to take our workspace over again. So we're going to equal it out. Here's, uh, use our space because we've got to get a whole number in there, so move that over a bit. All right, we're going to take one of the whole numbers and rename it. So this crosses out. This becomes an 8. The one that we are going to rename, we're going to call 10 tenths because that's how we need to have tenths. So we're going to name it 10 tenths. 8 and 10 tenths is the same as saying 9, so you've renamed this whole number. But you had some tenths to begin with. So this part of, this, of your um, problem has to be combined. You had 1 tenth and you renamed 10 of them. So that comes over here as 11 tenths. Pull your whole number over. This entire fraction just gets moved over into position. So this is a copy job. Now we're finally ready for subtraction. We're going to keep our denominators because they're the same. 11 take away 6 is 5. And then we're going to subtract our whole numbers, 5. The last thing we're going to do is put it in simplest form, lowest this terms. This numerator is smaller than the denominator, so it follows the divisibility rules. Does, does 5 and 10, are they even numbers? No. Do they both end in either a, a 5 or a 0? Yes. So we can use a 5 on this one. We're going to divide by 5. This is how we're going to put the fraction in lowest terms. So let's put our fraction out here. 5 divides into 5 one time. 5 divides into 10 two times. And then pull over your whole number. So your fraction now is in lowest terms. We have a 1 on top. And when there's a 1 in the numerator, you know your fraction is in lowest terms. So spacing is important. Neatness is important. Uh, being sure that your numbers look like the numbers that you want, that your 7s don't look like your 1s. And, the, and a, a very important one is really knowing your multiplication and division tables well enough that you can easily get common denominators and reduce to lowest terms. So those are some of the pitfalls that I see when I actually teach fractions on a one-on-one -on -one basis over the years, so I'm giving you as much information as I can. If you are being tripped up in any of those areas, then 
you be, go back and see if you can tweak the way that you're doing the problems. Maybe it's just a matter of being neater on your paper and not confusing yourself or being more consistent with the steps that you're doing, that your thought process. It takes a while, but if you do it the same way over and over and over again, you'll get your own way uh, of uh, working with these fractions. And believe me, these fractions follow you way into uh, upper math. So this is, a, this is an important exercise.